Hi, I'm Glenn Jewis. Welcome to episode 26. And this week, we're going to take a look back at a very, very quick and cool compositing technique, which kind of solves one of the problems that people can have with compositing. And that's how to match the color between the foreground, the person or the object, and the background so that they look like they're originally photographed together. A lot of times we can kind of look at our pictures when we're working through them. When we maybe first start off doing all this compositing work and we just can't seem to get the color of the person and the background matching so that it actually does look like they're photographed in that particular scene. So this is a very, very quick way of doing it. But I mean, this isn't the only way of doing it. Photoshop being such a massive program, there are so many ways we can do this, making all kinds of color adjustments, using all the adjustment layers that we've got available to us. But this is a quick, almost down and dirty way of actually applying it to our pictures. And it's one that I tend to use, I don't know, maybe 99% of the time, because it is so quick and easy. So we're gonna do it on this picture here of Dave. This is my mate Dave Clayton. It's a picture that we did as like a bit of an homage to our favorite program, Dexter. I absolutely love Dexter. And this is the out, this is the uh, final image, not the outer camera. This is the final picture when we've had all the, uh, the retouching and lighting effects and all that kind of stuff added to it. But here is a, a part way through the retouch here. Now, this is where I've done a little bit of retouching on Dave and I've just added in the background behind him. So you can see that there's Dave on the gray there that we photographed against there, this gray seamless. And I've just added a very, very quick selection and I've put in the background behind him. But you can see, if I just zoom in there, the difference in the kind of temperature really between the background and him. It clearly looks like he wasn't there. He's way too warm for this background. So here's how we can make it look a little bit more realistic, if <laughs> that's the right word to use for this picture. But you know, make it look as if he actually is in there anyway by calling him down. Now, all I'm going to do, I'm going to get a copy. This is the actual background that I used that I put in behind him. And I'm going to use another copy of that. So I'm going to get my move tool, click and drag this background texture, if you like, to the top of my layer stack. I'm going to get free transform and just stretch it out so it fills the whole picture like so. Now, I'm now going to apply a filter to it. And ordinarily, when we apply filters nowadays, we would try to use them as smart filters because that allows us to go back in and make adjustments later on. It's a very, very flexible and smart way to work. But with this one, there is no point because there are no adjustments that we can make. It just does one thing. And the filter we're going to use is this one, filter, blur, and average. And basically what that does, you'll probably see that now on the screen. What it does, it takes the layer that you're working on, Photoshop looks at it and mashes it all up to get one consistent color across the whole layer. So the color you're looking at now is that peeling paint texture been completely mullered and made into one average color. But now what we can do is we can apply this color onto Dave to help him to match in with his background. And here's how we can do that. Well, the first thing we do is in the layers panel, we're gonna change the blend mode of this average blur color layer from normal to color, because that's all we want is the color. But you can see at the moment that that color has been applied to everything, the background and to Dave. We only want it onto Dave. Now, what I could do is now add a black layer mask and just paint in white to bring the color only onto Dave. But I've already got a layer mask here where I cut Dave out of the background already, so I can make use of that already. It's just working smart. So I'm gonna get my option key or my alt key, depending on what you're working on. I'm gonna hold it down and click on that layer mask and then drag it above. And what that does, it creates a copy. But the thing is at the moment, that layer mask is only allowing the color to appear on the background because the layer mask, there's white and there's black. Where it's white is where it's showing the color, where it's black, is where it's hiding it. And we don't want it on the background, we want it to appear onto Dave. So all I need to do now is invert the layer mask. So what's white becomes black, and what's black becomes white. And I can do that by going to Image, Adjustments, and Invert. So now we can see that that average blur color is applied to Dave. Obviously way too much at the minute, but because it's on its own layer, we can take the opacity way down to something around about maybe 30 for this picture to help him kind of blend in. And this is all personal taste here, but I think for this one, 30 works well, and it gives a good example of the kind of thing we're trying to show you. So if I now zoom in, 
If we look at this, turn it off, you can see that Dave is really, really warm, but by just doing that quick effect where we do the average blur and putting it onto Dave's skin at 30%, look at the difference that makes. That's off, that's on, that's off, that's on. It kind of helps him a lot more now to blend in with that background. And like I say, that's something that I do generally on probably 99% of all the composites I do when I'm trying to match somebody in with their background. So there you go, there's just a very, very quick technique that you can use to match the colour between the foreground and the background. But of course, Photoshop being Photoshop, there are so many ways that you can do that, doing all kinds of colour adjustments. But this is just one of those ones that is super quick. The great thing about this particular technique is that you're going to, although you're adding a solid layer on top of your layer stack, by just using the colour blend mode, you're still keeping your retouching non-destructive. And also, this technique will work on pictures that you've got where it's a solid background, background or even a big scene going on behind them as well. All you need to do is just put a copy of that background at the very, very top of the layer stack, use the average blur and then just use your colour blend mode and dial it into whatever strength you want and it works a treat. It's certainly a great starting point to then carry on to doing more kind of effects that you want to do before you finish off your picture. But hey, that's all for this week. Make sure you click on the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that I post each and every week. And again, I'd really appreciate it if you could share this video and my YouTube channel with anybody else that you you think might like to see all the free content that I push out each and every week. But for now, until next time, I'll see you soon.